Okay, welcome. Thank you for being here, Tori. Thanks for being here, Bryn. Um, I am Juliet Preston, the sort of like the liaison with the chapters. And I have with me um, Vedrana Subodich and Carmen Hall. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves um, right now while we're just kind of waiting for others. Somebody named Abby from Weber State, she is coming late. And then um, I haven't heard from BYU yet. Um, so we're hoping, and Amanda Bishop should be here, so from the U of U. So um, anyway, can we start with those introductions? Maybe um, Vedrana, start with you. Hey, it's nice to see you and while we're waiting for others. Um, I am a uh, faculty member here at the University of Utah, just uh, teaching piano, career development for musicians. And I am also um, the chair of the college, what are we calling it, collegiate committee, coordinating these events with uh, you and the committee members. And so we just wanted to meet up with you and give you some love and encouragement about you know the things that you can do as student chapters at your organizations. And I'm Carmen Hall and I'm the president of Utah Music Teachers Association this year and next year. So I just wanted to pop in and say hello. So Tori, where are you from? Where are you at school? Oh, I study at UVU. Okay, so I'm teaching, I teach at UVU as well as Juliet too. So maybe we'll cross paths in the hallway, I don't know. Uh, what is the course that you teach? That what? Was funny. what? Oh, I'm teaching the entrepreneurship class. Oh, okay. I also know that you did a jury like the last two semesters. Yeah, she's been on the jury. I did the note. I, I was yeah. there for the jury. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some really good feedback. It was very helpful. Thank you. Oh, good. And Bryn, where are you at? Yes, I'm in Logan at Utah State. So representing the Utah State. I'm the president of the Utah State Collegiate Chapter. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys, for being willing to be presidents. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep it going, right? That's great. I know it's not so easy on the collegiate level, so you just have to keep the ball rolling. That's what the president does, right? Yeah, no, it's been good. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you for those introductions. Um, We're gonna start off with the slides that uh, Dr. Halp uh, has prepared. So I'm gonna share my screen and um, make sure that I've got these ready to go. Uh, let's see, get into present mode and there we go. Let's see. And then I've got to also, sorry, I'm, I know I'm over the age of 50 when I tell you everything that I'm doing uh, on my computer in real time. That's, that's what I've <laughs> noticed is happening in my life. You're narrating your actions. <laughs> I do. Um, so I just um, need to share my screen. Okay. And I think it is. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see which one it is here. Can, let me know if you guys can see this um, Music Teachers National Association blue page. Is that coming up, Carmen? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, there we go, okay. You're in presentation mode. Good job. All right, uh, do you want to narrate, Carmen? Sure, I can do it. Um, so I just wanted to um, hopefully let you know what MTNA does for you and maybe you can pass this on but um if we would like to share this with you guys tonight because there's some deadlines coming up if you want to participate and then it kind of just tells you what you can plan on or look forward to and um maybe even next year or and there's some other things beyond that but let me know if you have any questions tori and bryn but we have the umta state conference that's coming up november november 1st and 2nd and hopefully you're both planning to be there. It uh, doesn't cost too much for college students. It's $20 for both days. Um, there's an MTNA collegiate symposium that this year, next year is in Oklahoma. And then the MTNA national conference in Minneapolis in 2025 and then Chicago in 2026. 
And I just want to talk about those things and then let you know about some travel funds and some other awards. So next slide. So the Collegiate Symposium is only for college students and it changes colleges each year. And this year it's in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, and then there's ways that you can participate. And I think now, if you'll go to the next slide, now that um, you can still participate in the recital that they're doing and uh, does it have deadlines on here? Uh, I don't see so for, for next year though, but you can think ahead for next year if you want to do your group. Um, they have general sessions, keyboard lab session, networking sessions, lightning sessions, and poster sessions. So a great opportunity to participate. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, and one thing I'll say is that they are always due like in early October, and so it's difficult for a new group assembled, but if an older group that, uh, I mean, um, this year's group could be thinking uh, and really coming up with some good ideas um, for the uh, for your, your concept or a project or something you're very interested in, Carmen said that it you they really want people there and and then it's you know pretty good chance you'll get in. Yeah, I mean guaranteed you'll get in. <laughs> so you then you just have to come up with the funds and we'll talk about that in a minute too. But in addition to the call for proposals, this is by telling you they are asking for teaching videos, and then you can also be part of the recital, which would be great performance opportunity for you guys. And those, the deadlines are October 18th. So coming up before we'll be talking about this at the state conference, but anyway, if you think it's a possibility, it'd be great. The national conference is always um, an opportunity for you to go and participate in a lot of things. One of the things I did when I was in school is to do a poster session. And it was fun to meet other people doing poster sessions and just all the people that walked by great networking opportunity and you're going to get i mean if it's a decent proposal you're going to get accepted and then your school will help you pay for it and you can get funds different ways but if this year is not in in your schedule think about it for another year because to have this on your resume is a big deal yes for example the poster session deadline was october 1st and uh, so that, and then the actual like presenting is back in April, like the very first week of April. So you do have to be really thinking of these in advance. Um, and then I know that, Bryn, do you remember, were you with the USU when they went over to uh, Nevada? Yes, or, yeah, we went. What was the um, incentive for participating as a college student? Did they have some kind of discount for you? Um, I think so. I think they do. Um, just like they have student discounts. But then also, I know that if you volunteer for a certain number of hours as like a kind of welcoming person or something like that, um, you can get your your registration fee waived um, for that national conference. I'm pretty sure. And so yeah. some of us did some volunteer opportunities there. Um, and I don't know. I know some of our professors presented there and we were involved with those those presentations. But um, we have submitted some proposals for the collegiate symposium this year, and that deadline was also, I, I think, October 1st, or right at the beginning of October um, already. But yeah, um, that's fair. So I need to add that, that you can uh, that you can volunteer to help I, because I forgot about that. You can be a door monitor or, you know, welcome. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. or help with the competition, kind of monitor the competition or things like that mm -hmm. um, with performers and times and things. So I know that some of us did that and that helped with the registration fees. And Excellent. Then, Bren, when did you guys start working on your uh, poster session that you submitted? Um, Like re that we just barely submitted? Uh -huh. um, honestly, just this year, like I, we have a pretty good committee um, this year that is excited to do some presentations and things like that. And so as school was starting, we've been meeting um, and kind of been brainstorming and submitted something for that. Um, so we, we've had a group presentation. I did an individual flash presentation. I know, I think one or two other um, students did flash presentations and then another one did a poster presentation for the collegiate symposium. So 
we'll see. But there's a couple of groups and then a couple of individuals that mostly we just started working on at the start of the semester um, yeah. or just in the last couple of weeks. And we're able to pull together enough to submit. And then we'll be continually doing our research over the next couple of months to kind of flesh out a yeah. um, full presentation for that. So perfect. Awesome. I can't wait to hear yeah. get in. Yeah. yeah, we're excited. We're hopeful. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what gets accepted. But I think. So did you also apply to present at the national conference uh -huh. or just the collegiate symposium? No, we just did the collegiate symposium. Yeah. You should do the national conference. And I'm, I don't know, maybe cost wise, it doesn't work out for you, but. Yeah. Um, the po anyway, it'd be great. No, it would be. Yeah, it's fun. Um, that's a question. Maybe this is kind of for the end, but I have been wondering because there's those two conferences. I've been to the national conference. I have never been to a collegiate symposium before. Um, some of my some of the other students here have. And I just wanted to know kind of your guys' thoughts on like the pros and cons of each. And if we were to only be able to do one, which one should be the priority or could be a priority or maybe kind of um I don't know, comparing the two. So if you have any thoughts on that, either now or at the end of our meeting, I would love to have your input. I think you're going to have to let us know when you come back from the Collegiate Symposium because okay. I've never been. And I don't think I, I know that it was held at BYU a few, like maybe 10 years ago. It was actually at BYU. Oh, great. But I don't know very much about it. So. Okay. So maybe we'll, back, right? maybe we'll try that one this year and go and report oh. back when we get back. Oh, that'd be great. And welcome, Abby. Thanks for coming. And Amanda, welcome. So we are in the middle of a little quick slide presentation about some of the opportunities that chapters can be uh, looking for. And so these slides we can um, send to you and you can even share them with your group as one of your meetings for the year. Because like Abby say, or Bryn is saying, most of these require some uh, knowledge of these deadlines in the summer. And then so that you already have, like she said, a committee or a group of students that want to be involved. And then you are working on these in September. So um, that's just a little feedback from from what we talked about so far. So I'm going to continue here, um, Carmen, and go back to the screen. OK, let's continue. All right, so should we move forward? Yeah, next slide. All right, so this was October 1st. And so you can find this on MTNA's website. Okay. Yeah, so you can present at the National Conference too. Mm -hmm. And then something to be thinking about are these other two awards. The Mary Sue Harris Award is for, and I think it's on the next slide, but Mary Sue Harris Award is $5,000 and the Stecker and Horowitz is $10,000. <clears> um, maybe on the next slide, what's on the next slide? I can't remember the order of this. There it is. Okay, so go back to the other one. Okay. Back one slide and go forward one slide. I'm going to have to change this around, but travel money, check with your own university because usually they have some travel grants and the MTNA has $100 travel grants. Per uh, person, right? Yeah. So once per year, but there's just, you know, every hundred dollars helps a little bit. So I would apply for those for sure because I think there's probably a given that um, if you do the application right, you're going to get it. And then the next slide. Um, just be aware of these two awards because I wish I had known a long time ago, but Mary Sue Harris Award is for recently graduated independent teachers who demonstrate commitment to the music teaching profession, profession and outstanding studio development. Um, so to be eligible, you have to have a teaching, being in the teaching profession for no more than three years and have an established studio. And... The deadline is November 5th for this year, but think ahead. So you right? have to be so, graduated. Yeah, so okay. the fellowship award is given to an independent teacher who has an established a studio, but has been teaching professionally for no more than three years. I'm just curious if this uh, precludes like graduate students, because if you've graduated once and you're teaching, but you're also in school, I, I'm just curious about that. Well, I think I would read the application, but, um, and then you could call national if you need to, but anyway, just an opportunity. 
And then Ms. Decker and Horowitz is someone who is 36 years or, or younger. And this is $10,000 and they're looking for artistic excellence, pedagogical leadership, nurturing spirit and community service. So think ahead, right? And probably up, like stack your resume, do whatever you can. And then when you're around 30, between 30 and 36, I think that would be the time to apply because you have as much on your resume as you can, but think ahead, it's $10,000, right? And then we'll see you at the conference. I hope you're all registered and, and really encourage everybody to register because again, it's only $20 to come one day or two days. And we would we always love to have college students at the conference. And I think that USC was presenting on Friday. Is that right? Uh, I don't know the schedule, but I have, I have the <laughs> yes, schedule that's and I right. saw them. Yeah, is that right? Awesome, Bren. Yes. Great. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and in fact, I can um, send you guys the, at some point I could send you the schedule. Most of the collegiate activities are put on Saturday, but with this one exception, um, the whole school's coming down Friday. Um, so let's go over quickly what to expect when you tell your uh, colleagues that you're coming. There are fantastic presentations fr Friday. And is that up on the website yet? Do you know, Carmen? Will you just uh, check while I'm talking? Sure. Uh, and on Saturday, the Duet Derby is the first uh, collegiate activity where we have five pianos, they're digital pianos, and we uh, put some duet music on each one and everybody sits down and sight reads duets. And we have a lot of fun, we rotate so you're not sitting with the same people each time and it's just a lot of uh, camaraderie and, and meeting people you don't normally uh, know. We have a, a great group of people that come and watch and enjoy that. So that's at noon and it just lasts, I think a half an hour. Um, and then at 3.35 is when the collegiates are sharing their 15 minute presentations and that will last till 4.45. And after that, we go upstairs and we um, get ready for the drawing. So while you're there in uh, the the days that you're there and you're going around to different places, you can be uh, filling out a card at the different vendors and then that goes into a basket and then they have a raffle. And what are you showing me on your phone? <laughs> no, you can't see it. The schedule is up. <laughs> the schedule is up there now. Yeah. Okay, great. So if you go to Utah MTA, so spell out Utah and then MTA.org, there is a, a menu for a conference. And so if you click on that, you'll be able to see registration form and the schedule. Uh, as you know, from Weber State, uh, Ralph Vanderbeek is gonna be the primary uh, speaker. And then um, from Weber State also, Esther on is gonna be the performer on Friday night. And we also have a Friday night activity we're trying to flesh out and we wanted to ask your opinion. Friday night is the concert and there's a, there's a dinner right beforehand and it's, it's a little bit of a pricier ticket because you're paying for the dinner. Uh, so most collegiates don't usually go to that, uh, although they are welcome to. Uh, we have had in the past some extra seating around the back that we've sold tickets just for the concert and somewhere around the neighborhood of $10. But what has traditionally been done on Friday night is uh, collegiate students get together and have a mingle and play games and we call it like a, a social hour. Uh, if you had to choose between having an activity that was just for you, separate, where we got to play games and maybe go somewhere and have something to eat, um, some snacks, uh, and just visit, would you prefer that or would you prefer the opportunity to go upstairs and hear the concert? So I just wanted to get some feedback from each of you on that. Let's start with uh, Abby. Thanks. I know... At least for Weber State, definitely, we all love watching our professor perform. So I can foresee, at least for this one specifically, all of the students would love to be able to go to the concert. Here. Makes sense. Okay, uh, how about Amanda? Amanda, do you want to unmute? 
Okay, we'll come back to her. How about Tori? So do you want an answer for me personally or what I what think, you think that your group? Yeah, maybe or both. the group. You're both. Okay. Yeah. It for both it would depend on who's performing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry, my connection was so bad. What was That's the okay. question? Well, the question was, would you like us to create a social activity for the different schools on Friday night? Or would you like to, do you think your student, your colleagues would prefer to go and hear the concert for $10 each? Is that for Saturday night? It's for Friday night. It's for, <laughs> for Friday. the conference when Esther on is the performer right after the dinner, the banquet. Um, I feel like it'd be good to see es Esther perform. Okay. Yeah. All right. Especially so, since she's doing the master class the next day. Uh huh. Okay. Um. So what about Bryn? So we're actually taking advantage of being down a little bit more south in Utah, and we're going to go to the Utah Symphony that night. There's a concerto, Mozart concerto, and a couple of other things happening. At the Utah uh -huh. Symphony, so we so, won't be. Oh, okay, so you won't be going conference. Saturday night. You'll be going Friday night. Yeah. Okay, I think that answers it for us. Is there's just not going to be a group, a big enough group there to do that? Okay. All right. Any other feedback before we move on? Am I still sharing? I'm not sharing. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. Are there any questions that you have about the conference activity, like the schedule of events or what to expect or what your if you were trying to tell a, a fellow student, hey, you want to come, it's a lot of fun. And they're like, well, what, what is it? Is, would I get anything out of it? And the answer is yes. Uh, besides the master class, which thank you for rem reminding me, Amanda. Um, and uh, also because of the, the pedagogical sessions that you can uh, learn so much as a teacher then there are the showcases where I think they're still giving out music. Do they still do that at showcases? This was it. We encourage them to give out something. Yeah. Yeah. I remember going to lots of conferences and coming away with bags of free music that I used as, as a teacher. So uh, if you had any other thoughts, um, Bedrina or Carmen, about ways to get their students excited about conference um, that I've not thought of. I think you're doing an amazing job, Juliet. <laughs> just incredible. It's just getting to know people oh, and oh, like being in the middle of where everything's happening for music teachers. So it's just a great place to be. I've told all my students, this is where you need to be, right? Yeah, so it's exciting. I tell my high school students who are teachers because unless you go to a conference, you don't really get that same experience. And Utah's very fortunate to have a very robust and large teaching community. And so our conferences are like little mini national conferences. There's so many people, the, the level of um, expertise is great, the master classes, I, and also the vendors are just fun for uh, seeing materials that you can use in your studio that these are not people that sell usually in a brick and mortar store. So they bring the materials there and you get to uh, try them out and learn how to be, uh, how to add new things to your studio or just for yourself. There's always a discount on the music that you buy there. Um, so I just always felt like it was, I couldn't, there was just not enough time to do everything that I wanted to do there. Um, all right, so let's move on. We also had um, ideas, I wanted to share ideas for how to plan activities, what kinds of activities to do with your chapter and to the importance of uh, keeping records of them, not just for the teacher coming up. Yes, Bryn. Um, I guess, yes, really quickly about the flash presentations. Um, as we're preparing those, kind of where do we like send our materials to or kind of how does that work, getting things over to you or different? Yeah, to me, I'll send out an email as we get closer with deadlines and more like an actual structured format, how many minutes and, and the technical, uh, uh, what is the word? the equipment that we'll have available for you. So uh, plan on 15 minutes. You can send me slides in Google or PowerPoint or PDFs. 
you can bring handouts. You don't have to do any of that. You can just do a completely interactive session where we're all standing up and clapping and singing. Um, and try to use as many people from your group as you can in some form. It's always more okay. interesting instead of one person doing all the talking. Okay. Sounds good, but there's nothing like right now that we need to submit no, or anything no, like that. Okay. I just give them like the, the week before and then even after that, I still take it. And even after that, I still take it because we want you to be there. We want We're just to happy to have you there. <laughs> we'll right. be there. Don't worry. Hand over backwards. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Good question. Okay. So let's go to activities. Um, does anybody have one that they could actually just share with the group of something that their um, chapter has done in the past or something they're planning this year? How about, do we, I mean, okay, I'll, Abby. Yeah, so we always as a chapter love to put on a Christmas concert and we always try to do it in some way to serve others. So this year we called the Veterans Home in Ogden and we're gonna be performing a Christmas concert for them. So that will be a really special thing, I think. That's fabulous. And you could have so much fun doing that. It's no, not serious, yeah. and you could do ensembles. Yes. Great. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's really excited. So. And you know what? You'll get some great music ideas at the Duet Derby. That's true. For Christmas? Okay. You're doing Christmas yeah. stuff? Yeah, we always do a little Christmas stuff. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Uh, anyone else have an idea? Um, Bryn, has your chapter, could you just talk a little bit about how USU has participated in uh, how your college students have helped with their festival that they do in the spring? There's some kind of, or maybe even the monster concert, what, okay. how the students help out and volunteer? Yeah, yeah. So um, at Utah State, we have a youth conservatory, which is awesome, um, where just different youth in the area or kids can come in, even adults, um, and all the piano majors just our teachers um, after we take some pedagogy classes and things like that. And with that, we have different events. Um, one's coming up at the end of the month, we have a monster concert where we've been preparing all of our students to play. Um, and then some of us conduct those songs, um, help with registration, things like that, um, as well as um, different like performance evaluations in the spring um, where it's kind of like a festival, yeah, where students can prepare one or two um, pieces and enter different categories um, and then come on campus um, and we help monitor rooms and give out um, awards and things like that for those events for our for teaching. Um, we have quite a few students that participate in the youth conservatory and so I think those are always a highlight for our students as well as just the college students to just be involved and um, have a community you know so we're not just one lonely teacher, you know, doing our own thing, but we get to really combine together and do a lot with, with that. So yeah, youth conservatory is a big part of what we do here. At even the colleges that don't have a youth conservatory, you can reach out to the local chapters. I'm, for example, uh, UVU doesn't have a conservatory, but here at Orem, we're doing festivals, we're doing monster concerts. And so if the college students would be willing to come and be helpful in that, that's gonna to add to your um, your resume or what, what Carmen was saying earlier, when you're trying to apply for awards and um, uh, you want to show that your chapter is involved and you learn a lot from how these are functions are run. And then you get to work with the teachers who are your uh, um, that's your next step in recruiting students for your own private studios is having teachers know you and uh, be interested in sending the students to you that they are not going to take. So it's a great way to be get into the system. Does anybody have another um, activity that their school would like to do or do you just want to brainstorm a few? I guess one that we're kind of looking at is we have a list of maybe a couple of, at the beginning of the year, we sent out a survey and we were just like, hey, what do people want to see? Like, what would you want to do this year? Um, and there were some thoughts about having just different guest speakers with different um, maybe specialties come in 
and kind of talk about either their career or teaching or like collaborative piano or, you know, all different types of topics. So we're trying to plan a couple of maybe one or two guest speakers throughout the year um, to come in and talk um, and, or teach on a topic that the students are interested in. Or is that something that all of you would like to do is have guest speakers at least once or twice? Okay, do you need some suggestions? Or do you think you could just reach out to your local uh, chapter presidents or your university advisor? So I think what um, Bryn was saying is- If, great if you idea. have suggestions. Yeah, yeah, we can. And one thing uh, Dr. Subodich and I would love to do is be part of that even early on. We've done it in the past through like a Zoom presentation, but we would prefer to drive and meet you. And if, if there was a time that would work for our schedule and, um, and Amanda Bishop has been um, part of that too. So we could come to one of yours and we could even provide a list of topics that we've talked about um, and you could pick which one you're interested in. But I like the idea of you giving a survey to your students saying, what kinds of things would you like us to maybe to explore this year as a chapter. So looking for ways to do some volunteering, some like you mentioned, Abby, and also some um, involvement with the local chapter and also ways to just educate yourselves um, with things that you're most interested in. Any other thoughts from uh, anyone else? I think it would be really nice to give an opportunity for even like undergraduates to learn how to give master classes. And so I don't know a way that like, I think it'd be really cool if we could even, I don't know, this is an ambitious idea, like uh, one or two people from each collegiate chapter to do just one giant event of a master class from any students that apply to do it. And yeah. then we can narrow out the students. I don't know. I, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Learning how to, to teach and being able to do that in front of other people is how mm -hmm. other students learn by yeah. working with other teachers, yeah. And I love master classes because it gives the audience an opportunity to learn as well or to figure out ways that they don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I know Vedran has done so many master classes and so has Carmen. They would be very willing. I mean, I'm just speaking for them, mm -hmm. but I know they've said in the past they'd love to um, <laughs> do that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like. Like, I, I also want, like, the experience to, as, like, the master class giver to be extended to certain teachers, like, student teachers within the collegiate chapters. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, let me just tr pass that over to Vetrida for a, a quick sec. Can you tell me a little bit more what you, what, what you mean by that? The master class opportunity being extended to student teachers? Is that what so, you said? Like, for example, it's like that the presidents of each chapter were able to give a master class and then there could be a discussion afterwards discussing the growth and development of how that master class was given. So you're really talking about teacher training. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think it's totally doable. You know, it would probably be um, ideal to do or like it in a few sessions rather than all at once. Yeah. You know, just to kind of have some, you mentioned growth and development. So, you know, in order to, for that to happen, I think you have to have both time to reflect and time to practice that. So, you know, I think what mm -hmm. comes first is instruction, then reflection, practice, feedback, more reflection. Mm -hmm. And or even just like experience to be able to say, hey, I've given master classes or like just experience, I guess. Yes. Yeah, so no, I, I think teaching, teaching in public is very difficult, actually, because um, there's some definitely some rules about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess partly why I'm interested is because I've considered doing like open class teaching, like 
where it's not completely private, but it's semi-private. I've considered doing that, but that's something I'm a little scared to do. So I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure we could come up with some kind of a presentation that would help people at least gain some knowledge about what is expected professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Um, why don't you write the, some of those thoughts down and email me and then I can uh, share it with our committee mm -hmm. and, and maybe think of ways we can make that happen um, and what, what setting it would be the most ideal. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to, do you all know how to reach out to your local chapter presidents using the, UN, the utahmta.org website? Have you ever gone on there and looked in the directory for like the Bridgerland chapter or the uh, Ogden chapter or of course Salt Lake chapter? Um, and then for UVU, it would be the Provo or Orem chapter or uh, Timpanogos actually. But if you reach out to those presidents, because everybody's listed in their phone number and their email, you can just say, hi, I'm the president of this. Our chapter would love to be involved um, this year with some of your activities or be aware of them. And they can send you a calendar and you can kind of take it to your group and say what you would like to either, maybe some people would like to attend a session or maybe they'd like to uh, help out with a festival because you do learn a lot from being hands-on. Um, Karma, did you wanna take that, uh, uh, send a Zoom invite to everybody? Is that what you're working on right now? I'm kind of working on it, but I'm, I think I've gotta get off of this one and then set up a new meeting and send an email to everybody. Oh, right well, with the link. what if we just said, this is, <laughs> we've got one minute and 20 seconds left. What if we just wrapped it up and would this be useful to do in the future for you uh, presidents. Okay, and in what, how soon would you like to do this? Before conference or after? After seems like a little long to me, but I don't know. Sometimes we do so much for conference and then afterward, there's a kind of a lull. Maybe it would be good to do it after when we can kind of get um, the rest of the year thought out and um, the presentations are done and you don't have to worry about those. Would that sound reasonable? Bryn saying yes. Okay. Yeah, I think and in uh, between now and conference, if you do have some questions, you certainly can just reach out to me and I'll hop on a private Zoom call with you because uh, we don't want you to have any um, any sort of you know hesitations or reservations about be joining us at conference. Uh, and feeling like you're doing your very best for the presentation. So we are here for you and we really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you and have a wonderful evening. And again, just reach out. Thanks everybody. Super nice.